So this video is going to be slightly different than some of my other videos. This is basically, should you get an eGPU or not? And I'm gonna go through everything that's involved with an eGPU and then I'll tell you at the very, very end, should you get one or not? Because that's how it works. That's how everything works. You're just getting scammed for watch time and views. So I have it divided out on my phone here. I don't ever have a script, but this is a very information heavy video. So I do have to keep my thoughts in line. I don't even have a script. I have like 20 words written down. To start, I'm gonna go over what an eGPU is, what computer does it work with, how do I even make it work, what graphics card should I buy for which laptop that I have, should I get one, and then I'll go over the full process and then all my final thoughts at the end of the video. And now everything I talk about in this video essentially will be linked down below. These are all affiliate links be through Amazon, but a lot of this stuff is really tough to find used because not a lot of people have eGPUs. So I would suggest looking used, but if you do purchase through these links, do understand that I get money for it. It does support the channel and supports me. And since I'm not having sponsors, you guys got to carry your weight on this channel because I'm not going to be able to support and fund this channel my whole life. Gosh, so ungrateful. But do remember that the stuff I do link down below is going to be very particular. Some of these eGPUs don't work with Macs. Some of these cables are very, very specific. I'm not just linking them to make money. I'm linking them because they are the things that you really should be buying because they are exactly what you need. So do keep that in mind. So to start, we'll go over what is an eGPU. An eGPU is a big old box like this one right here. This is an eGPU. This is the eGPU I consider and suggest buying. It works well with MacBooks and Mac OS. It's also one of the cheapest eGPUs money you can buy. Also, it has a pretty beefy power supply. So an eGPU is essentially a power supply and a graphics card slot. A graphics card slot is just a PCIe slot, PCIe Express, however you wanna say it. Basically, it's just a PCIe slot that you can slot in a graphics card into and then power with the power supply. And then what you do is you plug a cable from your computer into the eGPU. The data basically from the CPU, RAM, storage, and motherboard, all that stuff gets sent through that cable. And then it goes to the graphics card essentially. And then it comes from the graphics card out onto the external display, which you're going to have to definitely buy, but I'll talk about that later. So that's a pretty basic overview of what an eGPU is. I don't know what eGPU stands for. Sometimes they're called eGFX. I don't know what any of those stand for. And it stands for external graphics card. That's what it is. <laughs> that's essentially all you're doing is you're taking a full-size desktop class graphics card, slotting it into a very small motherboard piece, basically. And then what you're doing is you're connecting a single cable to this device and then you're running a display port cable from the eGPU in the back here and then you're running that to an external monitor to get very close to desktop class performance of this graphics card although because you are transferring and transmitting data across a cable you are going to lose a little bit of performance but we'll talk about that a little bit later so what computers does it work with and to the person that's going to link these down below, thank you very much. If you take the time to do that, I will definitely, I don't know, I'll just smile. Maybe I'll do it myself. Basically, what computer does it work with? Well, it only works with Thunderbolt enabled computers, which is every MacBook Pro from 2011 to now, and then most Windows laptops from 2016 until now. Thunderbolt is essentially an Intel developed hardware process, basically. You get PCI lanes into a cable basically it's pretty simple I, I guess that's how the only way i can explain it is basically you get access to almost directly to the chip which is how a pcie slot works although normally you only get by four performance from the cpu into a thunderbolt 3 slot but it's still very good you get 40 gigabits per second through thunderbolt 3 and then 20 gigabits per second thunderbolt 2 10 gigabits per second on thunderbolt 1. if you ask different people it's 8 16 and 32 but i think it's 10 20 and 40. so get at me fam <laughs> so how do you make this work it's very easy if you have a thunderbolt 3 enabled windows or mac enabled laptop you just plug in the cable to the thunderbolt 3 enabled port on your device make sure it's a thunderbolt 3 one it'll have the little lightning port if it's not Thunderbolt 3, it won't work. It'll just be a USB Type-C slot. So do make sure that it is Thunderbolt 3 enabled. It's the Thunderbolt 3 slot. And keep in mind on some laptops, like the Dell XPS line laptop, it's only a by two port instead of a by four port. So you really plug it into essentially a Thunderbolt 2 port, but the differences in performance isn't that huge. 
What you do is you plug it into the computer, plug that cable into the eGPU that your graphics card's already slotted into and connected up with power, and then it should just start working, especially if you have a Mac or a Windows computer. It works really well on Mac. I know personally it's worked really well in the new updates, and on Windows it'll work just as well. So now let's talk about Thunderbolt 1 and Thunderbolt 2 ports. Well, basically those are very similar to Thunderbolt 3 and there's no reason Apple shouldn't support it, but for some reason they don't. What you have to do is buy a Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 converter cable, which I'll link down below. Again, a very specific cable that you have to buy. I would suggest buying the one from Apple because that's the one I use and that's the one that I trust the most. And then you have to buy a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 2 cable. That way you can plug in the Thunderbolt 3 port into the eGPU and then the Thunderbolt 2 cable into the end of the converter and then back into your MacBook Pro. Basically, you have to buy an extra cable and that's a little bit of a pain in the butt, although you get to sell those in the future for roughly the same part, the same price you bought them for, so I wouldn't be too broken up about that. Then you have to download this thing called Purge Wrangler, and what this will do is it'll run you through this script that'll basically allow you to use the Thunderbolt port on your MacBook Pro, the Thunderbolt 1 or Thunderbolt 2 enabled device with an eGPU. For some reason, Apple nuked it in 10.13.6 or 0.3 or 0.4 or 0.5. One of those four, doesn't really matter, but basically Apple took away eGPU support from Thunderbolt 1 and Thunderbolt 2 enabled MacBook Pros for no reason at all, just because they hate you. So that's how you get it working. It's pretty easy. I'll link that down below. Again, follow the steps very carefully, read what they say. It takes you five minutes to figure it out. It took somebody like myself, who's not very good with software, about five minutes to figure it out. You just basically, Download it, disable SIP, which is System Integrated Protection, which is essentially just an extra layer of protection from downloading stuff that's sketchy from the internet. After you disable System Integrated Protection, you can then run Purge Wrangler, which will allow you to use it on any Mac that has Thunderbolt 1 or Thunderbolt 2 enabled devices on it. So you could use this on an iMac, a Mac Mini, a MacBook Pro, any of those devices with Thunderbolt 1 or Thunderbolt 2, which is the mini display looking port in the back of it, you can use it on that. Now do keep in mind that if you pump it back into the display, you lose a lot of performance. Again, I'll talk about it a little bit later. So that's how you make it work. Now, which graphics card should you buy? Well, if you have a Mac, you can't buy any NVIDIA graphics cards. It won't work in Mojave and it'll have very sketchy support in High Sierra. Now, if you only have Sierra or before, you can get it working, although I just wouldn't even worry about it. And I would really just suggest updating to the latest version of whatever software you have and buying an AMD graphics card, whether it's the RX 480, 580, Vega 56, Vega 64, or the RX 570. So basically, if you have any Mac, just buy an AMD card. It works super well with Mac OS and all of their software. So just don't buy an NVIDIA card if you have a MacBook or buy an NVIDIA card if you are gonna run this eGPU in Windows. Now, if you're running Windows, use whatever graphics card you can find. NVIDIA, AMD, doesn't matter. But if you are using a MacBook Pro and running Mac OS, I would just suggest getting any AMD card, whether it's an R9 390X or an RX 460. It doesn't matter. Just get any version of any of those cards and you'll be good to go because trying to get an NVIDIA card working in Mojave is impossible and before that is really, really tricky. But since Apple has really good support, for AMD because their architecture is built into Mac OS, you don't have to download any drivers. If you are running Windows, you do have to download the drivers for that graphics card. Do keep that in mind. I would suggest if you're running a Mac to get an RX 580 or an RX 480. Those cards are dirt cheap now, about a hundred bucks even for the eight gigabyte variants. That's mainly thanks to mining, but you give and take with those. So if it's a mining card, do keep that in mind. Although I'm not really worried about it because a lot of those cards, the only thing that could potentially break is Obviously the whole card could fail, but really the biggest problem of failure is going to be the fans stop working. And I really wouldn't worry about that because they're meant to be used. Graphics cards are meant to be used. So don't be super scared about that. I wouldn't worry about it. And it's kind of cheap enough where if it were to break, yeah, it sucks in a hundred bucks. It hate, I hate throwing away a hundred bucks, but it's cheap enough where you're probably not going to like die over it. And if you are super concerned, just get one that wasn't mining. You might have to pay an extra 10, 20 bucks. So it's not a huge deal either way. So should you get one? <sighs> I've made you wait this whole time. It depends. When you start to add out the cost, it does kind of get a little bit pricey, especially when you start to look at what you could buy with that money on the Windows side. But do consider this, if you're running a MacBook or any Mac computer, the only way to get this kind of performance would be to either use an old Mac Pro, which is only running Xeon chips, which the single core scores are kind of lousy, so to game on is not going to be very good, or to run a Hackintosh. And if you're someone like myself who hates Hackintoshing and think, thinks it's impossible, and I'm just not a big fan of it, 
then I would just definitely suggest getting an eGPU. Obviously, you're gonna spend extra money. With the money you spend, roughly 200 for the eGPU, 100 bucks for the graphics card. If you have Thunderbolt 1 or Thunderbolt 2 enabled device, you have to spend an extra 80 bucks on the cables. So you're spending roughly under $400, which sounds like a lot of money, but again, if you're very smart with how you buy these things and you're very careful about it, you can buy an RX like 560 for like 40, 50, 60 bucks. And then in a few months, sell that. When you save up some extra money, sell that and then buy an RX 580 or an RX 480 for a pretty massive upgrade in performance or even step all the way up to Vega 56 or Vega 64. But if you're running a Windows laptop, it's tough for me to totally suggest yes on getting an eGPU. But do consider this, if you have a high-end Windows laptop, to get similar performance to that CPU, it's going to be kind of tough. You're going to have to buy, if you have an i7 8750H or above or more powerful than that, you're going to have to buy a pretty beefy CPU like an i5 8600K or an i5 8400, probably closer to the 8600K without an overclock and a motherboard and RAM and storage and a case and a power supply and the graphics card. So if you start to add up the costs, it makes sense, especially if you just want one machine. You don't have to worry about having two different machines, one to do work on and one to game on, or one to check emails on and one to game on. Like, just get the one device that can do everything. And if you're comfortable with doing this as an eGPU and, and running this as an option, I would definitely consider it. It's really cool. I'm a huge fan of eGPUs and what I think they mean for the future. Right now, I think they're not quite there. They're very good, but they're not quite there yet. But I do think in the future, eGPU are going to be the next step. Or they'll die off because integrated graphics on like the Intel chips or the mobile graphics will just get so good that they'll render them essentially useless. So do keep all that in mind. But all this stuff has value. So if you are to buy it in a smart way and you don't love it, it's just not what you expected it to be or it's not as powerful or it's not powerful enough or it's glitchy or whatever. Whatever reason you don't like it for, you can always sell it and you'll lose maybe 50 bucks. But if you're very intelligent with the way that you buy things and you're patient, and you find things for a good price and you just find the things that you need, I think that I think you're going to like it. I think it's worth it to take the risk on an eGPU because it's such a cool thing to do. Now, do keep in mind you have to buy a monitor, but if you built a desktop, you'd have to buy a monitor as well. And the awesome thing about an eGPU is you get the ability to upgrade. So you can upgrade the graphics card in the future. You can upgrade the monitor in the future. Whereas if you were to spend all that money and sell your laptop and buy an iMac, you can't upgrade anything except for the CPU and, it, and doing that is very, very risky. So I would just, I, I love eGPUs. I'm a huge fan of them. And honestly, I think that you should get them. Maybe I'm biased because I like them so much, but you don't lose that much performance. In terms of raw performance, I'm gonna put some numbers up here, but I'm gonna link something down below that goes really in depth and way more in depth than I would like to go in a video because it's super boring. But basically, you're losing about 20% of the performance of the card that you're buying. So you do need to keep that in mind, especially if you pump it to the external display. If you pump it to the internal display, you're losing like 40% of the performance. And that's kind of the same across the board. Thunderbolt 1 and Thunderbolt 2, you lose a little bit more performance pumping it to the internal display than you do with Thunderbolt 3. But to the external display, the performance is essentially the exact same. And in some tests, it's actually better on Thunderbolt 2, which is kind of funny. But that's just a glitch of whatever they were using. So at the end of the day, if you have a powerful laptop that you've already spent a decent amount of money on, or a nice little MacBook Pro that you bought used, like a 2012, 2013, 2014, or 2015, you can plug in an eGPU and make that laptop last for so much longer because most programs are starting to rely more and more on the graphics card than they are the CPU, especially like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, all those things use the eGPU. Now, if you are gaming, obviously the graphics card is gonna be really important with that. So if you game on a MacBook, all you have to do is flip it over to Windows and then you'll be good to go. So the full process is pretty simple. You buy everything, you hook it all up, you connect it, then you buy your cables, hook that all up, plug it into the computer, plug the cable into the eGPU, or if you have the Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 cable, plug those into each other, then plug those into the devices that you need to plug them into. And then it's very simple. If you have a Thunderbolt 3 enabled device, you just plug in your display adapter, whether it's DisplayPort or HDMI, you plug that into the GPU and you plug that into the display and then it should just start working. <laughs> Especially if you're using Mac OS, I know it works really well. On Windows, it can be a little bit sketchier, but it should work right away. You shouldn't really have to download anything. 
But if you do have a Thunderbolt 2 or Thunderbolt 1 enabled MacBook Pro and Mac OS, you do have to download Purge Wrangler, which will be linked down below. Follow the directions, it's super easy. Don't get intimidated by all the big fancy letters. It's super easy. You literally download it, press like two buttons, like one and then two, and then you just press enter and then it's good to go. So at the end of the day, it's pretty easy and I would suggest everyone do it. And I think it makes a lot of sense but if you're somebody who uses Windows, it definitely starts to make a little bit less sense. If you're able to find a computer that costs less, the entire eGPU build would cost like $400 or more, then just go with that. But honestly, an eGPU is a great way to stay with one laptop, minimize all the computers you have, minimize all that stuff, and have a lot of fun doing something that takes an older computer, like a 2013 MacBook Pro, and really bring it up to snuff with today's computers, especially because that CPU is still very powerful and the GPU that you plug in will be a 2019, 2018, or 2017 graphics card, which will give you awesome performance. Oh my God, I am sweating right now. So thank you guys for watching the video. It's so hot in this room. There's no, there's one vent and it's smoking in here. Thank you for watching the video. I have so much butt sweat right now. It's disgusting. I will see you guys in the next video. I know this video is a little bit different, but I get a lot of questions about eGPUs and I figured I would just go over everything I know and hopefully this can be like the eGPU guide that you need in 2019 <laughs> because there's a lot of information, a lot of things to think of and I think I covered everything. I do my best to respond to comments. I know I've been kind of lousy recently, but I've been pretty busy at work and honestly, I've been very tired, but I did get to sleep in today, which is awesome. So. Thank you so much for watching the video. I will see you in the next one. This has been Scott with Techno Eclipse. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace out. <laughs>